Lux presents Hollywood. Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Gregory Peck, Jane Wyman, and Claude Jarman Jr. in The Yearling. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When a motion picture is nearly eight years in the making, one naturally looks forward to something rather special, both in story and production. And The Yearling lives up fully to these expectations as one of the most widely acclaimed pictures of the year, still being enjoyed by theatergoers all over the country. In bringing it to the screen, metro golden Mayor cast it to perfection with tonight's Lux Radio Theater stars, Gregory Peck, Jane Wyman, and Claude Jarman, Jr. The Yearling is a warm and deeply moving story of simple pioneer people in the Florida scrub country, people whose ways have changed little through succeeding generations, and who today are still without the luxuries we take so much for granted. Luxuries like Lux Toilet Soap, for instance, which so many lovely women in America find indispensable. In the yearling country, families still prepare their own crude soap cakes from palmetto roots, in striking contrast to the outside world, where one can step into the store and, for a few cents, buy a pure white cake of Lux. A contrast, I need hardly say, that we should all be very thankful for. And now, the yearling. Starring Gregory Peck as Penny Baxter, Jane Wyman as Ma, and Claude Jarman Jr. as Jody. Our curtain rises on Act One. I come here to the scrub country after fighting in the war with the Yankees, for this were a place to live in, deep in the woods and wild and far from towns and wars. Not many people live here, but longs the river there's a village, and was there I found my wife. Between us, we cleared and cultivated these few half-fertile acres. Here we brought four children into the world and buried three of them. We've had our hardships and our happinesses, but this is home for Ori, my wife, and the boy we call Jody, and for me, Penny Baxter. Oh, Pa. Oh, Jody, where you been? Your ma's been bellering for you, boy. Been to the creek, Pa. It has been a rambling, is that it? Reckon it is, Pa. Well, it's a fine day for it, son. But women folks can't see for their lives how a boy loves so to ramble. I see the sight down to the creek, Pa. A mammy coon with two babies. Prettiest little fellas you ever seen. Coons is pretty. Pa, if I should snare me one of them for a pet, I bet even ma would love it. Your ma ain't gonna go loving no coon, boy. You reckon she'd rare up was I to mention it? I need a bucket of water. And supper's most ready. Yes, Ma. I reckon she'd rare all right. But I wish I had me something to pet and play with. Get along, boy. Fetch your Ma some water. Hey, old Ma, I like you, Ma. Ha. Huh. You and the rest of the livestock get mighty loving when I got vittles in my hand. Now set, both of you. Yes, ma'am. Dear Lord, thanks again for the vittles. Amen. Well, that's a mighty skimpity blessing. Well, I'm hungry, Ma. The Lord will know what I mean. Saw an old coon today, Ma. She had a couple of babies. I bet if you'd seen one of them little old baby coons, you'd have loved it to death. Jody, we ain't having no coons around here. What about a little old bear cub, then? Or baby panther? Jody! But, Ma, I just gotta have me something for a pet. We got milk or plenty. They ain't an extra drop from sun to sun. But I just want something all my own, Ma. Something to follow me. Something with dependence to it. Going on 12 and still wanting some kind of a play dolly. But, Ma... Now, p- stop pestering before I take a brush to you. Yes. Boy, is asleep, Penny. Ain't it time you put up the stock? Or it seems like you get mighty hard on a boy at times. Always running off. Always wanting to bring some pesky critter in this house. <laughs> well, a boy ain't a boy for long. Leave him kick up his heels a little. Dale, come, he won't even want to. Nori, I've seen our boys stand a gaze at the wonderment of bird and critter. 
Just like I stood when I was a boy in the forest. Don't be afraid to love the boy, Ori. I didn't figure you was, son. I heard Ma go out, Pa. Where'd she go? Ellie Ma's walked down to the burying ground. Now she still frets for her young'uns, Jody. She never talks about them, does she? Or Ezra, or David, or little Lori. No, she never talks. Are they part of Ma's rearing, Pa? You figured that out all by yourself, did you? I was just wondering. Your Ma's a wonderful woman, Jody. Yes, Pa. When we first come out here... She was that pretty and full of the fun of life. She was a thing to see. She worked as hard as I did clearing this here place we got. A man couldn't have had a better wife. Then when we lost your sister and brothers, one right after the other, well, it ain't easy for a woman to have a young'un's taken like that. Make something inside of her close up tight. So as if it were to happen again, she ain't gonna let it hurt so much. I were lucky, weren't I, Pa? I'm 11 years old. I'm a way past the age of dying. We're all lucky, son. Mighty lucky. Well, what happened, Pa? The dead old Pa killed? Use your eyes, boy. Our calf and the show. You come right here in the barn, Jody a bear. You see them tracks old Slewfoot last night. That dad ratted no count vomit. And them dogs that sleep right out there in the clearing. Ain't a dog born as smart as that bear, Ma. Not even Julie. You aim to go after that bear? I aim to get after him right now. Pa, can I go, Pa? Can I? Hunting bears is man's work, Jody. We've got to learn sometime. Get the dogs, Jody. Get that new dog, too. Ma, you best fetch my gun and some rations. I reckon we're getting old Slewfoot pretty tired, Pa. Yeah, you won't feel so tired to old Slewfoot raise up in front of you. Old Slewfoot killed a man once, didn't he? That's what they say. Pa, you'll not be scared when we come up with it. Well, not unless things go mighty wrong. Pa, was I scared? You must have climbed a tree. Well, even if he ain't scared, you... The dogs, Pa! We're towards the swamp, Jody. Keep running, boy. Don't get faint of on me. in there, all right. He's a coming, boy. He's a coming. No, he ain't, boy. He's a going. You best wait here. Get him, Julie. Get him, Rip. Perk, Perk, you dog. Perk. Where is he, Pa? Where's the new dog? He's running away, son. There he goes, swimming the swamp. Julie, Pa, the bear's killing Julie. Shoot, Pa, shoot. Pick a three, son, lest I miss. You won't miss, Pa. You'll get him. <sighs> pa, you hurt, Pa? What happened? His gun backfired. Pa, will he come back? Slewfoot? No, I reckon he's had enough, too. Look. There you go, son. The dogs, Pa. Julie, Rip. Here, Rip. Here, Rip. Julie ain't steering, Pa. We must get her, son. Come on. But what if he comes back? Oh, Slowfoot. That bear's halfway to Jacksonville by now. This confounded, worthless gun. We'll do the dog no good setting up all night. Get to bed, Jody. Your ma's right, son. Poor old Julie, doll. She'll live, won't you, Pa? Oh, I'm certain she will, son. Pa, I can't stop walking. <laughs> well, we went a fur piece. How you like going after Bear? Well, I like thinking about it. <laughs> but the fighting's right fearsome, ain't it? It's mighty fierce. Well, that's got to be. It's the law, boy. Kill or go hungry. I was right proud the way you come along with me, boy. Now get to bed. Good night, Pa. Night, Ma. Night, boy. Night. Ori, I just got to get me a new gun or court trouble. How are you going to get a new gun? Where's the money coming? Well, Ma, I aim to trade that there new dog of ours for one. You said that dog were no count. <laughs> well, he ain't much on a bear hunt, but Lem Foster's a fool for dogs. Jody and I aim to go visiting the Foster's. You go trading with them sinful Foster's, you do good to come home with your britches. Why do we need sinful, Ma? He's my friend. A fine friend. He's crazy as a loon. <laughs> well, go visiting in the morning. Jody and me and that worthless dog. We'll be at the forest too soon, Pa. You glad you're going to see Father Wing? I like Father Wing. He ain't crazy like Ma says he is at all, Pa. Ma and Pa Forster, they had five boys all growed up before Father Wing come along. He ain't to blame for hatching out peculiar, I guess. Get along, you dog. 
Sheriff, the worst than the dogs. If it weren't such a hot day, I'd trail every one of you myself. You hear what your pa said? Now shut your mouth. Then set your broom down, Ma. You about bust my face. Wish to head. Might make you look pretty. <laughs> hey, Pa, looks like we got a visit. Well, Penny, Jody, set you down. Father will be right glad to see you, Jody. How's your old woman? Ain't complaining then, Buck. She's still driving you around? How's your corn coming? Oh, corn's right good, Mill Wheel. These good-for-nothing scapers don't know what farming is. They're spotterwing, Pa, up at the barn. Well, you get out and play with him, Jody. Go on. Spotterwing! Spotterwing! Hey, Jody! A new baby coon. A coon? He's sure pretty, Spotterwing. My eagle died. He was too wild a pin. I'll never catch me nothing with wings again. Why? If you had wings, what would you do? Fly with them, wouldn't you? You would never come down again, would you? I reckon not. I tried once to fly. Nothing that his wings should ever come down again. You never did try to fly again, did you, Father Way? I tried too young, Jody. Hurt my leg. Except I don't mind much. If I should get me another coon, you can have it, Jody. I'd be proud to have one, but Ma won't let me keep nothing. Oliver Hutto said he'd bring me a monkey from the South Seas. Where's Oliver now, do you reckon? Still sailing the sea, Jody. I might go to sea someday, if I could go with Oliver Huddle. Oliver's my friend. I got three friends. Oliver, my pa, and you. I got lots of friends. Spaniards, too. Spaniards? They ride by on big black horses. These tall and talk, and they shiny helmets. There ain't no Spaniards left around here, Father Wing. They all gone like the Indians. They's here. You listen to me. The next time you go to your sinkhole for water, well, you know that big magnolia tree? Just you look behind it. There's always a Spaniard on a big black horse riding past that magnolia. Guess... Guess we'd better go in, Father Wing. If you fancy to, Jody. Sure glad you come visiting. Well, sir, that bear took off across the south scrub through the thicket... And finally, right to the edge of Juniper Creek where the dogs caught up with him. It was old Slewfoot, all right. Tarnish and wished I'd been there. Rare enough, was he, Penny? Well, was he? This year, dog go with him? Perk? Oh, yes, he went with him. Do we track good? Do we hold that bear at bay? <laughs> lame, I tell you the truth. This here's the sorriest bear dog I ever followed. Got a self lame, did he? No. No, not as I know of. Well, get on with the story, Penny. Well, there's Slewfoot. Ran up on his hind legs. Well, I pulled the trigger... And that old muzzleloader, she backfires. Get on with it, man. Well, there I am. Old Julie's getting killed, and this here perk dog no good, and my gun no good, and I'm in a pure fix. I quit that car stopping all the time. Well, old Slooper figures he's had about enough. The last me and Jody's seen, he's heading for no man knows where. I had to give a gallon of whiskey to been there. Heading for no man knows where. Penny Baxter, you're a liar. Why? Ain't no man ever said that to me afore, Lem. Just two dogs don't make a bear like old Slewfoot turn tail. How come you never mentioned this here dog? I told you, Lem, the dog is worthless. I notice he come out pretty good shape. Not a mark on him, is there? No, no, nary a mark on him. Uh, it take a mighty clever dog to fight a bear and not get no scratch on him. Penny Baxter, I want that dog. When I want a thing, I get it. Now look here at this gun. It's made in England. And no muzzle loader neither. You fill your own shells easy as spit. Now look at it. Sure, a pretty gun. Take it. Take the gun for the dog or by thunder. Oh, I... I, I don't figure to get myself murdered if that's the way it stands. That's the way it stands. Well, you got to promise not to beat the pudding out of me after you hunted the dog. Shake. It's a trade, Lynn. Oh, by you got the the Settle down, the hell out of you. <laughs> Let's have some fiddles. <laughs> Fine day for clothes washing, Ori. Nothing wrong with the day. It's just having to tote things so far to this here sinkhole. Oh, ain't Jody been helping you none? He helped. How long since you and him went visiting the foresters, Penny? Oh, must be more than a week now. Well, them forest will be making track here one day. The way you greased that gun out of his hands and him so purely mean. <laughs> it was his own doing, Ma. He'd leave kill you as not for cheating him. Well, don't fret on it, Ori. Jody, what you doing? Pa, oh, well, I can see him, well, I can see him. See what? Old Spaniard's riding along. Right behind the magnolia, Pa. Right away said I could find here. That's nice. 
What's he seed? A Spaniard. What Spaniard? I don't know. Oh, there, now, look at this dress. I knew it wouldn't stand another washing. What else you got that's cool to wear? Nothing. Excuse my wedding dress. Well, that black alpaca is nice. That went to pieces last year. Pure rags. Doing work just like this. Toting washing half a mile from the house. Toting water to wash in. Toting water to cook in. Or you'll get your well one day and right outside your door. After all these years, I believe it when I see it. Lori, I think maybe Jody and me will make us a trip into Volusia. Where you want to go to town? You got your gun. No, we got furs and venison things to trade. Yes, ma'am. I figure day after tomorrow, Jody and me will go into town. Before we return with Act Two of The Yearling, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, with news about pictures and players. Good news, isn't it, Mr. Keeley, when a best-selling novel makes a picture voted the most outstanding by the New York Critics' Poll. I presume you mean Darrell F. Zanuck's production of Gentleman's Agreement, Libby. Uh Uh-huh. It's a picture with a compelling theme, the fight against intolerance. With Gregory Peck and Dorothy McGuire playing the leading roles. The supporting roles are exceptionally cast, too. I was delighted to see Jane Wyatt on the screen again. So was I. You know, Jane divides her time between the New York stage and Hollywood. And while Gentleman's Agreement was being filmed, you might say she commuted across the country. Flying trips, they were, literally. (laughs) Sounds like a strenuous schedule. No, but you'd never suspect it to look at Jane Wyatt. Every time I visited her on the set, she was always so fresh and beautifully groomed. I imagine John Kennedy can suggest a reason for that lovely, fresh look Jane Wyatt has. I certainly can. Three words will do it. Lux soap care. Isn't that so, Libby? You're right. Jane is an ardent Lux girl. Has been for a long time. She tells me she never travels without a supply of her favorite beauty soap. That's a good rule for any woman to follow who wants to be sure her skin gets gentle, protecting care. Beauty facials with Lux toilet soap are so quick and easy. But my, how effective. You know it's a beauty care that works when nine out of ten screen stars recommend it. Here's something women everywhere should know. Fragrant white Lux toilet soap is as fine a beauty soap as you can buy. For years, it's been Hollywood's own complexion soap, the beauty soap of the stars. So if you haven't tried this gentle white soap, why not get some tomorrow? Use Lux toilet soap regularly and be delighted with the fresh new loveliness, the softer, smoother look it gives your skin. We return you now to William Keeley. Act two of The Yearling, starring Gregory Peck as Penny Baxter, Jane Wyman as Ma, and Claude Jarman Jr. as Jody. For three days, Penny and Jody have been off to town on one of Penny's rare journeys out of the wilderness. It's late afternoon now as the travelers return home, their clothes ripped and torn, their faces more than slightly battered. We're back, Ma. Hey, Ma, we're back. Time you was, too. Where's your paw? Putting up the horse, Ma. Sure wish you could have seen us in town. Look at you. What happened to you? In town, Ma, it was a fight. Me and Pa and the forest is an Oliver. Oliver? Oliver Hutto? He's back from sea, Ma. He was in town seeing his girl. And the foresters, well, they figure she was Lem's girl. Now, ain't that just fine? They was all piling on Oliver. So Pa and I, well, we had to help him. You sure that's what you fought about? Well, sure, Ma. It was a good fight, too. We lost. You sure that it turned over that no-count dog that Pa got his gun for? I don't know why Pa should have up at Lem. Pa told Dog the dog was worthless. My words were straight, son. My intentions was crooked as the Oklawaha River. Hey, Ma. Well, ain't this just fine. Brawling with them no good foresters like he was no better than they are. Well, there's one thing will make you happy, Ma. Look. Now, did I make a good trade? It makes near five dollars we got saved. Now we can buy tobacco seed, enough to have us a fine money crop next spring. And every bit of money we get from the tobacco is going into bricks and mortar. So she can have a new well, Ma. Right outside your door. Well, I declare. Well, now, I I can't imagine it. 
having all the water I need right here. Not even caring if some slops over now and then. You can slop all you want, Ma. And being able to waste a whole bucket full just to cool myself with. Put the money in the pitcher, Ori. Well, I declare it'd be such a blessing it won't seem natural. Should have seen Jody in the store, Ma. He and the storekeeper's little girl. Holding hands. Pa, I weren't holding hands. If you say that again, Pa, I, I'll just die. Now, leave the boy be. I bet you didn't bring back half the things I ordered now. Open the basket, Ma. Come on, boy, outside. We best wash the trail off our feet. I never knowed a man yet that could be trusted. Where's my paragoric? Where? Now, if that ain't just like a man, dress goods. Throwing away money on dress goods. Oh. I declare, men ain't got no more sense than... How much did this cost? You just tell me how much money you wasted on such foolishness. The next time you go to town, I'll... <laughs> She's a rare, Pa. Don't she like the dress goods you brought for her? She likes it fine, boy. Then let's go in. No, I'll leave her be, Jody. We best take a look at our corn. We got ourselves a day's work tomorrow in the field. <laughs> Plow enough, Pa. Can't we rest for a spell? All right, boy, we'll rest. Pa, Father Wing claims he can talk to vultures. I don't know as if vultures have much I'd want to hear. Well, maybe if used to tame one, it might make a pretty nice pet. Hey, we got company. Been admiring our corn, Ma? I ain't admiring nothing. You know why them hogs didn't come in last night? They were stole. Stole? They was baited. Look here, in my hand, corn. Well, sure enough, corn. Near the sinkhole. They come and took our hogs, Penny. Who has, Ma? That ain't hard to guess. Them fine friends of yours. The forest. Them black-hearted thieving no good... Go to the house, Jody. Fetch me my gun. You was right, boy. See them tracks? Dogged if I can understand. Cold out meanness. But, Pa, town them Forrester said he'd shoot if we come around. I'd rather let them keep the hog. How are we going to live if we don't protect our rations? You want to beg off going? Reckon not, Pa. Reckon I'll go with... Pa, look out! Rattlesnake! Uh, get back, boy! Pa! That's my arm, Jody. You got me, boy. There's a big one. There's a deer yonder. Now, mind what I tell you. Pa, to where door you shot? Yes, boy, yes. Now, you take your knife and open up a belly. Cut out the liver and the heart. Maybe we got a chance this way. Hurry, boy, hurry. Here, Pa, done like you told me. Your knife. Give me your knife. There. Boy, you bleed to death. Well, I'd rather that than swell. I see the man die from snake bite. Do it hurt, Pa? Like a hot knife. Now give me the heart, boy. The liver. Pa! Oh. The dough's got to fall. Can't be helped, boy. Now, listen. I got to try to make it for home. I hate to ask it of you, but you get on to the Foresters. Get one of them to ride for Doc Wilson. It's my only chance. Can you do it? I can do it, Pa. I call out to him quick, saying I'm snake bit. Before they chuck something, or maybe start shooting. Yes, Pa. And you'll make it, Pa. You hear me? You're obliged to make it. Want your little varmint? He's snake bit limb, my boy. You gotta help us. Is he swell, boy? Yes, please ride for Doc Wilson. Please, please. I'll ride for him. Thank you, Millwin. Spare your thanks. I'd help a dog with snake bite. Where you going, Buck? I best ride after Penny. Walking's bad for a man snake bit. How's my pa? He's bad. Better stay here, Jody. Your ma's in there. Doc Wilson. Thanks for doing what you did, Pop Millwheel. Seem like we'll make it, Jody, and again, seem he won't. Jody, how come you and your daddy was up on our road when he was bit? We was a-hunting our hogs. Sure. I wouldn't fret none over them hogs. I just got an idea they'll be home by sundown tomorrow. Yes, sir. Ma, 
Jody. Pa, you waked up. You waked up. <laughs> oh, death got to wait a while on me, boy. Where's Ma? She's here, Pa. And the doc, Ned Dozen, Pa. They've been sitting by you for so long. <clears throat> what's this, what's this? Pa, he's alive, Doc. Lord of Jeepers. He made it. Ma, wake up, Ma. Penny, he's dead. Uh, not by a long shot. He's pulled through. Oh, Penny. <laughs> I could sleep for a week, Ma. That's just what I want you to do. Uh, let's get out now and let the man alone. I, uh, I best fix us some fiddles. It's one your thing, Pa. You all right now. I think so, boy. I'm proud of the way you've done what was needed. What is it, son? Pa, you recollect that doe you shot? Can never forget her. She saved my life. You recollect that little fawn she had, Pa? Most likely it's mighty scared and lonesome and hungry. Yes, boy. Won't take much to raise a little old fawn, Pa. We taken its mammy and it weren't no ways to blame. Don't seem grateful to let it starve, do it? Pa... You figure I ought to go out and find him? Boy, you got me hemmed in. You tell your ma I said you was to go and get the fawn. Hey, I found you. Don't be scared, baby. Your mama's gone. Don't you worry, none. I've come for you. It's me, see? It's me, Jody. And you weren't scared of me, Ma. He was laying right where his mammy made his bed. Look at him, Ma. Look. I see him. I could take milk for a long while. Don't know as I'd give my consent if I'd have known he was so young. Ori, I got one thing to say. The little fawn's as welcome in this house as Jody. It's hisn. And we'll raise it without grudgment of milk or meal. I only said it was young, Penny. All right, so it is. Now, don't you bother about my tall, Ma. I tend to every little thing that needs attending to you. He won't meet a bite of trouble to you. He won't even... What was you saying, boy, before he turned over his milk? He won't do it again, Ma. I'll teach him good. I'll learn him everything. Won't I, huh? Won't I? Jody, where you been? Just a rambling moth the phone. Ain't his eyes pretty, Ma? Ain't he got a cute foolish tail? Look at it. All dear's tails look the same. Want to pet him more? You can. I ain't petting no fawn. Got a name from you, Jody? Can't think of one that's good enough, Pa. Why don't you call him Rover? Ma, Rover's a dog's name. Well, call him Joe, then. Ma, Joe Baxter sounds like a man. You know, get me a good name. Following. Following's ailing, boy. Buck said he's been mighty poor of late. Oh, but he'd love to see my little old fawn, and he gets wonderful names for critics. Yeah. Following's got an ear for such things, the way some folks got an ear for fiddle music. Can I go see Following, Ma? Can I? Well, all I know is my voice don't mean nothing around here. Thank you, Ma. I sure like you, old Ma. Jody? Yes, sir? Either you don't hug me no more, or you quit sleeping with that fawn. <laughs> Dog, to find out what ails, Ma. Come here, little old fawn. Why, you smell just fine. Hey, Jody. Hey, Buck. We come to see Father Wing, Buck. Me and my fawn. See him, Buck? Ain't he cute? Ain't he something? Jody, best you go home, boy. Father Wing is dead. But, but I come to see him. You come too late, Jody. I'd have fetched if there'd been time. Won't even time enough to fetch old Doc. One minute he will breathe him. Next minute he just warned like as if you'd blowed out a candle. Come on up to the house, boy. You can look at him if you like. I lost my boy. 
They'll not hear you, Jody, but speak to him. Hey, water wing. I wish he could have seen you fall. I told him about it. He talked about it lots. He said, Jody's got him a brother. I... Come here, water wing, to name him, Mark. Well, he did name him. He said a fawn's tail is a little white flag. If and I had a fawn, I'd name him Flag. Flag. Like the fawn. We aim to bury him tomorrow, Jody. Be right proud was you all to come say farewell. Get in there, dog. Get in. What's all this? You can't leave the critters out in a storm like this, Ma. Two dogs and a deer. Why don't you let in the cow and old Caesar horse and have everything to suit you? Ain't it nice in here, Ma? Hearing the wind and the rain, us in here safe and cozy? Oh, get your dry now, both of you. Supper's waiting. Go on, Pa. What happened? Go off the tail. Well, sir, Uncle Miles looked at them two panther cubs, and he says, I'm going to catch me one of them. But he didn't have nothing to tote him home in. But Uncle Miles, being from Georgia, had on long underdrawers. So he taken them off, tied knots in the legs, and made them a sack. Hey, now. Now he put in the cub in it. And just as he's reaching for to put on his britches again, here comes old Mammy Panther crashing out of the thicket. Uh, Jody boy, fetch me my pipe. Oh, Pa, right in the middle of the tail. What you grinning at, Penny Baxter? <laughs> no, nothing, Ma. I look all right? You look just dandy, sweetheart. Here, Pa. Thank you, boy. Well, sir, Uncle Miles, he lit out through that swamp and dropped the cub. And the old mammy, she gathered it up, drawers and all. But she's so close behind Uncle Miles, she stepped on a vine, and it tripped him and throwed him flat amongst the thorns and brambles. <laughs> oh, Pa. Now, Aunt Ma was a kind of muddle-minded woman, and she never could make out... I want Uncle Miles come home without his drawers on a cold day and his bottom scratched. But Uncle Miles always said that warn nothing to the puzzling that Mammy Panther must have done over them drawers on her cub. Oh, Pa, <laughs> you got all them tales in your mind and hardly ever tell them. I ain't much for dogs, but there was a dog once I'd taken a notion to. She had the prettiest coat. Hey, now, Ma's gonna tell one. So I said to the feller owned her, when she finds pups, I'd like one. He said, well, you're welcome, but you ain't got no way of hunting. I weren't yet married to your pa, Jody. A hound will die, he said, if it ain't hunted. Is she a hound, says I? He says, yes, am I said, then I sure don't want one, for a hound will suck eggs. Well, now, that's a mighty exciting tale, Ma. <laughs> you got any more like that? Hmm? I might, if I think on it a while. I've seen rain in my time, Ori, but nary such a thing as this. Nor'easter for sure. It's been four days already. Four days constant. Well, we'll give her one more day. Then you're going to stop it, I suppose. And then we'd be obliged to get out in the fields and save what we can. Four days. There ain't no good in it. There ain't nary a thing on earth a body can call his own. Here's the last of it, Ma. Last basket of corn. Close the door, Jody. Most of them rotted, our whole crop. I keep turning those ears, Jody, so they all get a mite of heat. Most of the beans is moldy, Ma. We just as good quit fighting and lay down and die. Well, Job taking worse punishment. That's right, find the good in it. Get out of that, you dad ratted vomit! Ma, the barn don't mean nothing. Don't hit him, Ma. That critter gives me no peace day or night. He can't come in this house no time. Never no more. He's just hungry, Ma. He ain't had You lock him up in the barn, and if he gets in my way again... Leave off the both of you. Ain't it enough to have trouble pouring on us out of the skies out the family quarreling? Has a man got to die to find peace? Well, I don't mean nothing, Frank. She don't mean nothing. Rain. It seems like it's... It has. Rain stopped. Oh. Teals, Benny. <laughs> Just... Just see the sight of them. 
water and mud blotted out. Mo, seems <laughs> like at times a body gets struck down so low, ain't a power on earth can ever bring him up again. Seems like something inside him dies so he don't even want to get up again. But he does. Well, there ain't much of a world left for us, Ori, but it's all we got. Let's be thankful we got any world at all. The clouds. They're breaking up, Penny. The sun's coming through. The sun? Jody. Why, look at here, boy. The sun's coming through. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, our stars will return with Act Three of The Yearling. Meanwhile, we're happy to welcome as our guest tonight another distinguished actress from Metro Golden Mayor, Miss Selena Royal. Miss Royal adds to a list of memorable screen parts her latest role in the picture from Sinclair Lewis's best selling book, Cast Timberlane. And I imagine you're excited about the Hollywood premiere tonight, Miss Royal. I certainly am, Mr. Keeley. Well, not to see myself on the screen, but because it's a benefit premiere for the John Tracy Clinic. And destined, from all reports, to be one of the most brilliant openings of the year. Well, I sincerely hope the audience will like the picture. The studio gave us a wonderful play to work with. And a top-notch cast, too. Not accepting present company. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Keeley. I'm sure you're really thinking, though, of Spencer Tracy in the title role, and... Lana, Lana Turner in the role of the woman he loves, and Zachary Scott is the other man. Lana Turner gives a remarkably fine performance, as always. Well, a fine performance is something you can expect from Lana, and beyond that, she has breathtaking beauty, more than ever as the leading lady of Cass Timberlane. Don't you agree, Mr. Kennedy? Well, there can be only one opinion about that. Lana Turner is simply gorgeous. And gorgeous is the word for her luxe complexion, too. <laughs> yes, peaches and cream describes it. And I know why. She depends on Lux Toilet Soap Care, too. It's such an effective beauty aid, certainly one that I'd never be without. If the ladies in our audience could see you, Miss Royal, I'm sure they'd be convinced that gentle Lux Soap Care is the right choice for lovely complexions like yours. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Well, no actress who faces the camera can afford to take chances with complexion beauty. No wonder, then, that Lux Toilet Soap is Hollywood's own beauty soap. This fragrant white soap really makes skin lovelier. Recent tests by skin specialists prove it. In actually three out of four cases, complexions became softer, smoother in a short time. So here's a beauty hint from Hollywood. To give skin fresh new loveliness, use the soap nine out of ten screen stars recommend. Get some fine white Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of The Yearling, starring Gregory Peck as Penny Baxter, Jane Wyman as Ma, and Claude Jarman, Jr. as Jody. The deluge that swept away the Baxter's crops has been forgotten, for the fields again are flourishing, and there's even one patch that's going to mean a new well for Ma Baxter the tobacco bed. For days now, Ma's been working the dress goods that Penny brought her from town. And Penny himself, in perspiring mortification, stands on the porch as Ma uses him as a dressmaker's model. Oh, a day like this out about cultivating. Now, hush up! How am I to figure the sleeves whilst you squirm like that? Ma, the boy's coming. Him and the fawn. It's like poor little Father Wing said... Jody sure has got him a brother. Hey, Ma. Hey, Pa. Now stand still, Penny. You'll bust one of these seams. I done all the hoeing, Pa. All right, all right. And I got the tobacco plants watered, and I... Well, now, look at Pa. Sure looks mighty pretty in Ma's new dress, don't he, Pa? Ah, I'll pretty you with a length of fat wood. You get out of here. How am I going to get this done in time for the wedding if you don't stand still? What wedding, Ma? 
Oliver Huddles. He's getting married. Oliver? Well, that girl in town, boy. That ain't the worst of it. They're going to live in Boston. You mean we ain't going to see Oliver no more? I'm afraid not, boy. When's the wedding? Tomorrow. We're going into town, all of us. Flag two more? You crazy boy? Well, you can see storekeeper's girl, Jody. Hold hands again, maybe. Oh, Pa. Come on, Flag. Let's sport. Let's run. <laughs> I figured that'd get him going. I hand me my needle, man. And settle down. Now settle down. So we're going away, Flag. To Oliver's wedding. You gotta be good, see? Take care of yourself. Look at you. Sure getting big. Me now, I don't never aim to get married. But when you get a little bigger, maybe you're gonna want a doe. So someday I'll get you a doe. We'll all live together down with the glen. You like that, huh? Me living with you? We're gonna take care of each other fine. Just fine, Flag. Fine. Reckon I ain't come to town for over a year. You like it, Ma? It's right nice seeing people again. And the buildings and stores. My, how it's grown. Ma, I don't get out enough. I don't, and that's the truth. Why, how do you do? Why, how do, Miss Saunders? How do, Miss Saunders? Oh, she won't recollect me. How do you do, Miss Baxter? How do? Well, I declare... Steamboats in the river, Oliver. She's a bloat. Goodbye, everybody. We best get going on our honeymoon. <laughs> Bye, Penny. Jody and me will miss you, Oliver. Enough to come to Boston to visit us, Jody? I'll come visit you, Oliver. Thanks, Jody boy. And thanks for sticking by me in the fight with these worthless friends of mine. <laughs> Now, look who's here. Storekeeper's daughter. Hi, you lady. Goodbye, Oliver. Goodbye, Twig. Goodbye, honey. Be a good, sweet little girl and look after Jody, huh? I sure try. Shall I kiss you goodbye, too, Jody? Well, well, I guess it won't hurt nothing. Come on, you miss the boat. I vow you had the prettiest dress at the wedding, Ori. I sure had a time. I sure had a time. How about you, boy? I don't like folks going away, Pa. It's like they was dying. Away far the winning time. Well, that's life, boy. Getting and losing, losing and getting. So you're going to Boston and visit Oliver? I, I don't reckon I will after all. I couldn't. I just couldn't leave Flag. Come here, yes, boy. I... Yes, Pa? Look. Our tobacco plants. Huh? The seed bed, son. Plum ruined. Twerk flag, got it, Pa. Twerk flag. Ha! Huh? But flag didn't mean it, Ma. Ma, don't go away, Ma. Listen, Ma. Listen. Your Ma figured at last she's gonna get her well dug. That's why she don't feel like talking. Oh, I don't reckon the fawn done it malicious, boy, but just something to jump on. Why are you keep looking at him, Pa? He's a yearling now, for sure. <laughs> You're a pair of yearlings now. That grieves me. You flag, what'd you do it for? You grown up. It just gotta be good. You gotta be. Pa? Yes, boy. There's a few tobacco plants you ain't trumped. Enough to get more a well dug? No, I'm afraid not. We could clear that field down behind the pot garden. If we can get them out right soon, we might plant ourselves some cotton. A money crop, boy. So's your ma can still get a well. Hey, Pa, we can do it. I'll work harder than ever, Pa. I will, I promise. This is the last stop, Pa. Have I spaded her enough? I reckon, son. That chain around her good? She's good, Pa. I stand clear, boy. Now get up, Caesar. Get up, boy. That stump ain't budging. Come on, Caesar. Get, uh, get up. Pa! So 
All right, son. I reckon I strained myself. I'll get more. No. I'll be all right. You want to hit Caesar? I, I best ride him in. <laughs> How's he now, Ma? He don't never know when to quit. He's strangers in it for sure, boy. Right bad, I guess. Ah, oh, please to hush, Ori. Jody, if it so happens, I ain't up for a few days. Think you can take charge around here? I can take charge, Pa. Cowpeas and eat horn, I best watch corn for cutworms. And keep the deer out of the fields? I'll keep him out, Ma. Pa, you get a good sleep. Gotta get your strength back. <laughs> All right, son. Night. Night, Pa. Well, I reckon you best get to bed, too. What's that? I said you best get to bed. Now, Mr. Impudent Big Mouth, you just get to your room. Yes, ma'am. Some people getting mighty important around here. Yes, ma'am. Night, ma'am. Night, son. Pa, for your supper. Well, now, there's two fine partridges I've ever seen. And only wasted two shots on them. I'm taking charge, all right, ain't I, Pa? Everything's come along just... Pa? When did you last see the corn, Jody? Yesterday. It was fine, near two inches tall. Your ma here says... Says something's at it. At the corn? Says nigh about the whole crop is gone. Ma, Flag ain't hit it, Ma. I get it. Ma, he couldn't have. He's been being good. He wouldn't eat the corn. Get out there and see for yourself. And that settles it. That critter's got to go. Well, boy. Hit were Flag, Pa. And I'm going to punish him. I'll whip him with a stick, Pa. I'll get him. Whipping won't help, son. Then I'll pin him up. I'll halt him. I'll tie him to the legs. boy. What's happened is powerful bad. You know that. Yes. But your ma and me, we're willing to have a try at a remedy. You agreeable to work extra hard to fix things? I'll just do anything, Pa. I'll work like you never see it. I'll just do anything you and Ma says. All right. Now, first you get whatever corn we got left, and you plant it just like we've done before. Then you start to build our fence up. When you get the fence higher than you can reach, rail on rail, I hope by that time I'll be able to help. But you've got to get it up before the corn starts showing again. Maybe that way was safe. I'll build that fence so high nothing will leap over it. Don't worry, Pa. Don't worry. Last evening, Jody, when you and Ma come in and tell me you got the fence built, I was that joyful. But all that work and all them hopes for what? He got out again, didn't he? flag. He, he must have jumped over, Pa. All our corns head up again. Jody, come close to me. You know we depend on our crops to live. We can't go on having them destroyed, one after the other. And you know there ain't a way in God's world to keep that wild yearling from destroying them. Yes. I'm sorry. I can't tell you how sorry. But you got to take the yearling out in the woods... Tie him up and shoot him. Oh. Now, Judy. Now. It ain't no use, Flag. I done took you all the way to the forest. Just figured Buck take care of you, maybe. Buck's gone horse trading to Georgia. So you gotta go away, Flag. Never come back. You can make out by yourself in the forest. Besides, I don't care for you no more. You ain't cute like you used to be. So get you here. Ain't nobody got any use for you anymore. Get off where to shoot you like Pa said. And don't you never come back. Never, never. back again, ain't he? Why didn't you do what I told you, boy? I couldn't shoot him, Pa. I just couldn't. Set my gun down. Yes. Tell him all to come here and go to your room and shut the door. I didn't mean to hurt the critter, but I can't shoot straight. 
you know I can't. Jody, take the gun from your maw. You got to finish him, boy. You got to put him out of his torment. You done it on purpose. You always hated him. You went back on me. You told her to do it. I hate you. I hope you die. I hope I never see you again. Take the shells and do like I say. Me, Flag. It's me, Jody. Won't hurt no more. I gotta do it. I gotta. Flag, now I'm gonna. I'm gonna run away. I ain't never coming back. Ever. How's he, Doc? The boy, will he? Yeah, most I can tell, Penny, he's took it out. Starved to death. Eaten up by swamp nuts. Where in sun's it been? He ran away. Eight days he was gone. Rivermen found him most a hundred miles downstream. Uh, he'll be all right another week. Fill him up with soup and kill him with poultices. I'll stop by again one of these days. Joey? Hey, Pa. <laughs> Boy, we near about give you out. But you're all right. I reckon, Pa. Glory be. I, I had to come home, Pa. Why, sure you did. I ain't meant what I said about hating you and Ma. Oh, I sure you ain't. When I was a child, I speak as a child. Where's Ma? As you walk down to the graveyard, son, reckon she's praying her thanks. Ma searched for you day and night. She ain't done nothing else. Jody, I'd be proud to know where you've been. To the river, Pa. I aimed to go to Boston. Were you hungry? Didn't get nothing to eat for four days. I'm sorry you had to learn it that way. Now you know. Old starvation. He's got a face meaner than old Slewfoot. It's fearful, Pa. Boy, you figured I went back on you. That's why you run away. But twine only me. Twine only your yearling deer having to be destroyed. Life goes back on you, boy. Yes, I reckon. I wanted life to be easy for you. Easier than it was for me. A man's heart aches seeing his young'un face the world, knowing he's got to get his insides tore out the way his was tore out. I wanted to spare you as long as I could. I wanted you to frolic with your yearling. But what's a man to do when he gets knocked down? Why, take his share and get up again. I'm ashamed I went off, Pa. You're near enough grow to do your own choosing, Judy. Maybe you crave to go to sea like Oliver. But I'd be proud that you choose to live here and farm the clearing. I'd be proud to see the day you got a well dug. So as no woman here would be obliged to do a washing on a seepage hillside. Are you willing? I'm willing, Pa. It's food and drink to have you home, boy. Now get your rest. I'll start the corn early in the morning, Pa. Yes, boy. We'll make it, Pa. We'll make out. Yes, boy. Come spring again, we'll even go hunting old sloop. Yes, boy. Good night, Pa. Good night, sir. <laughs> he's, he's back, Penny. Our, our boy's back. He come back different, Ma. He's taken the punishment. He ain't a yearling no longer. I, I thought we'd lost them all, Penny. All the young ones. I'll, I'll go see him. Go on, Ma. Ma, that you? Jody. Jody boy. Oh, you 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 get some sleep now. Night, Mom. Night, son. Ah, 
As our curtain falls on the unforgettable Baxters, I'm quite sure that Sidney Franklin and Clarence Brown, who produced and directed The Yearling for the Screen, are more than proud of tonight's three stars who brought it to the air. Gregory Peck, Jane Wyman, and Claude Jarman, Jr. They've certainly given us a memorable evening with tonight's performance. Thank you, Bill. And I think we owe a vote of thanks to Claude for coming all the way from Nashville to be with us. Yes, indeed. And after tonight's performance, I can readily understand why Claude won a special Academy Award as Jody. What have you been doing, Claude, besides rehearsals, since you've been in Hollywood? Well, for one thing, I went to a preview of Robert Taylor's newest picture out of the MGM, The High Wall. And for another thing, I'm willing to bet you paid a very special visit to a very special friend. Who was this visit to, Claude? It wasn't by any chance to the missing member of tonight's cast. That's right. I went over to the studio zoo to see Flag. Sure has grown. <laughs> and did he remember you? He did when I gave him a head of lettuce, but Jiminy, he's grown. Well, he could say the same about you. Uh, Jane is one of the most frequent players on Lux. I hardly need to ask you if... if... I use Lux soap. <laughs> you know I do, Bill. It's a wonderful complexion care, and I use it faithfully. Can you tell us what you're presenting next week, Mr. Keeley? Yes, indeed, Claude. Next Monday night, we have another outstanding evening in this theater when we bring together two of the screen's most popular and famous stars, Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton. What are they doing for you, Bill? They're appearing in Alfred Hitchcock's recent hit for RKO, Notorious, a mystery thriller strictly in the Hitchcock manner, charged with suspense and filled with tense romantic interest you'd expect from two such players. Sounds right in the Lux tradition, Bill. Congratulations and good night. Good night. Good night, good night and thanks for all of us. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton in Notorious. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Here's a message to housewives. Saving used fats is still vitally important. Our Secretary of Agriculture tells us that world shortages of fats and oils are still acute. So continue to save all your used kitchen fats. Your dealer will pay you for every pound you turn in. And remember, many dealers now pay higher prices. Jane Wyman appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of Voice of the Turtle. Heard in our cast tonight were Jimmy Ogg as Fodder Wing and Gwen Delano, Ira Grossell, Larry Dobkin, Norman Field, Bill Johnstone, Barney Phillips, George Neese, Eddie Marr, Ann Carter, Noreen Gamil, and June Whitley. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Notorious with Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton. Pepsi and won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsi and toothpaste with the brands they'd been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Notorious with Ingrid Bergman and Joseph Cotton. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.